Hey y'all, it's Connie. Welcome back to the Southern Cottage. Today we are in my greenhouse and it is all about strawberries. This is my absolute favorite time of the year where we get to plant everything. It is the 3rd of March. Sorry, I don't keep up with the dates. Um, it's the 3rd of March. It is almost 80 degrees out here. It's probably about 90 plus in my greenhouse. I've got my windows open, so if you hear my air conditioner and the road noise, I apologize. But this is where I have to get this done. So today is all about the strawberries. My youngest son does not eat much of anything out of the garden. He is not a vegetable kid, but he loves strawberries. I planted strawberries last year. Um, I was able to winter over a few of them, but I wanted to up my game this year, so I bought a few more. The wind is blowing things down. Anyway, let's talk about the different kinds of strawberries. First, you can start your strawberries from seed, which takes forever. Um, I am not going to do that because there are much better options. That will be your cheapest option. Um, the next option that is the least expensive is bare root. I have two different packages of bare root strawberries. These are Ozark Beauties. These are uh, perennial in my area. I'm in 9A at the very, very top, so probably closer to 8B. Um, these are perennial. They're ever bearing for the most part. I'm lying. These are the Ozark Beauties. They're ever bearing is what they say, um, but they are not ever bearing. They will bear in the spring and in the fall. They may bear some through the summertime uh, if you shade them a little bit. We'll talk about that in a little while. And then you have your June bearing, which these give you smaller amounts throughout the season and these give you a larger amount all at one time around June. So they're all perennial. The ones that I have, I have one container that's got some June bearing strawberries in them. These are called Sequoia. I have one container with these and then I have one container with the ever bearing. And these, you get 10 plants. I bought these at Lowe's. So each one of these, both of these kind, uh, were $4.98 for 10 plants. So you're looking at 50 cents for each bare root. These are, let's see, Ozark Beauties. So just like the first package that I got from Lowe's, again, $4.98 for 10 plants. This I actually bought at Sam's. Um, I don't know if Sam's are everywhere, but it's a, it's a club that you have to be a member of. And I shop there all the time for my catering business. These were $12 and you got 40 roots. 12, 24, 36, 48. You're looking at about 25 to 30 cents per plant here. These are absolutely your best bang for the buck on the bare root okay and your next option is this is a three inch pot and these are labeled perennial i don't believe they have yeah they don't it just says ever bearing perennial strawberry these were almost two dollars each they've already got fruit setting on them um, you can get a little bit of a head start with these. Now, I wasn't able to find six packs. Um, I was only able to find these. A six pack, you could probably get it for five or five dollars, four dollars, something like that. I'm not real sure because I couldn't find any. But um, these are definitely more expensive, way more. Before I get going on the containers and the soil prep, these need to be soaked in water. So I am going to separate these out. This is the only package of June bearing, so I'm going to put it in here. There are, there's a hole in there. Never mind. I'm going to put them in here and just keep them separated. 
Let me show you what they look like when they come out of the package. Just come in a plastic bag. This bag has some holes in it down here to keep it dry. And this container is dirty. It doesn't matter. It's my seed starting mix. And they look dead. They really, really do. There's a rubber band wrapped around them. I'm going to take that off. And I'm not going to attempt to separate this. Well, yeah, I am. But I, just a bit. Just to show you. See that green in there? These aren't dead. They just need to be planted. So I'm going to set those over to the right. And I'm going to hold on to this. Because why not? It's just dirt. And then the Ozark Beauties. same thing and then I am just going to fill this up with water and let them sit while we get all of our soil and everything together And make sure they're all under the water and agitate it a little bit. And they're all covered. And you can't see without me spilling. All right, I'm going to get these covered in some water and we will get on to the containers and the soil mix. Okay, let's talk containers. Strawberries are very shallowly rooted, so you really only need about a five inch container. Um, they do love to be watered and they do like to stay moist, but not dripping wet. They don't like to be soggy. So whatever container you choose, make sure it's well draining. And I swore I'd never do this again, y'all, but I did it. I bought the um, stackable three-tiered planters from the Dollar Tree when they first came out. I bought 11 of them. I don't like that number, but it's going to have to work. <laughs> and um, they are actually exactly five inches deep. So we are going to try these. <laughs> and pray. Now, if you use these, I, I'm going to say I've never owned a green stock, can't afford them. Um, I'm sure that they are much better, but you got to work with what you got and what you can afford and try to try to make it work out. So I will say on these, they come with a cup on the bottom to kind of catch the drainage to keep the water down there, you don't want that. So inside, it hooks in right there, and I don't know how well you can see that, but these just need to pop right off. And that way, the drainage, uh, the water will just drain right through. I know that's loud, sorry. I've already done it to all the other ones, so Y'all, let's take the sticker off. We're not Minnie Pearl in it. And if you don't know who Minnie Pearl is, y'all look her up on YouTube. So, I'm going to use those. You can actually use just about anything you want. Um, just know that if you choose something that's really, really deep, um, you're just going to be wasting soil. You could actually plant a plant in this. This is about a six inch planter that I got from Dollar Tree. You could plant one right in there and it would be just fine. And then my next option is this tub. I found these at a local family owned grocery store. They were $5. 
I do not know how big they are, but let's figure it out. If I can find my tape measure. This tape measure has been out in this greenhouse forever, and it's dry rotted. So, inside dimensions, about 18, 19 inches across. So, and it is 7 inches deep. So, that's going to be just fine. The only problem with this is there's no drain holes. I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that. I used to try using a drill and a large drill bit and I ended up cracking all of my plastic containers. And then I do not remember who I was watching. Maybe I was doing a craft or something and just used the tip of the glue gun to melt a hole in plastic. I'm like, I can do those that with my pots. This glue gun is a is one that you can unplug and walk with. This is my outside glue gun, my greenhouse glue gun. It's been out here for a couple of seasons. Watch. I want to do it this way, but I'm not sure you can see. You just put the tip directly onto the plastic and give it just a touch of pressure, not too much, because again, you don't want to crack it. And it's just melting right through. We'll clean all that up in a minute, but I'm going to put five holes in the bottom of this. And then I will take a uh, box cutter and just clean up all the plastic because I don't want plastic running around inside my soil. It goes pretty quick once you get your glue gun hot. It is going to leave a mess on the tip. Wait till it cools and you can just pick it right off. But do not use your, your fancy high dollar glue gun or one that's brand new unless you want to. Because it's never going to be the same again. It'll be just fine for working outside. This one actually got left out in the weather and it's still working. It's been out here for about three years. And I know you're going to ask, what do you use a glue gun for in the greenhouse? Well, that'll be for another video. But you know you can hot glue succulents to stuff and they, they survive. I might do a little video on that. But not right now. So yes, you need a hot glue gun everywhere. I'm just saying. See the gunk? All right. Let me find my box cutter and I'm going to flip it to the inside and just clean these up. And I've already done this to all the other ones. I have five of these. I don't know if I told you all that, but I have 60 bare root strawberries and two plants. So I have a lot of plants to get planted today. Try not to cut my hand. Sometimes the plastic will just pop right off. That one's clean. This one's more on the outside. And then you're left with a hole. A lot of these holes are just a little bit too big. And um, even your regular drain holes in your pots are a little bit too big. I'm going to show you how to fix that too. And I'm just going to pop this off the bottom. And we have our drain holes. Like I said, all the rest of them are done. So we do not have to uh, watch me melt plastic. Okay. You can use screen. Um, you can use coffee filters. Whatever you want. This is drywall mesh. I bought this three or four years ago when I started on my succulent journey um, because succulent soil is really, really sandy and grainy and small and you definitely want to cover up your holes, but it is a mesh and it's sticky. So I'm going to just cut five pieces, let me just cut a couple here for you. 
and all you do is drop your roll and cover it up. You can, like I said, you can use screen coffee filters. Um, I've seen people use newspaper. Newspaper will break down. Coffee fil filters will break down. Uh, this mesh will not, and neither will screening. But this is cheaper, and it's kind of the perfect size. If you're using really, really, really fine soil, you can just take two pieces of this and crisscross it and make even smaller holes. And that is it. That container is ready to make me some strawberries. Let's talk soil. So strawberries need a light fluffy soil and I have in the past used just regular potting soil and to me potting soil is a little bit heavier than what plants need in a pot. Um, a general rule is the smaller the pot, the lighter the soil, uh, the fluffier and lighter the soil needs to be. So um, I always, always add perlite and peat moss to my potting soil. And I am also always trying to find a way to save money and I was watching <laughs> YouTube and I came across the guy God, I cannot remember his name if I can remember the video um, I'll link it below and he was making his own potting soil and he basically looked on the back of the potting soil bag figured out what was in it and just mixed his own and I'm like okay let's try that uh, because in his potting soil was peat moss perlite, compost, and, oh my word, y'all, fertilizer. I already add peat moss and perlite and fertilizer to my containers. So what am I doing buying bags of potting soil? Well, for one, it's easier. You don't have to mix it all, but I, I, I mix that stuff in it anyway. Um, peat moss and perlite are way cheaper than a bag of potting soil. Um, so I'm going to do a little experiment. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Um, I don't want to take a chance on losing all of my stuff. I'll be able to tell if they're not doing well, then I can take them out and redo them. But I'm going to do about half of these in my own potting soil mixture. And then I'm going to do them like I normally do with a bag potting soil mixed with peat moss and perlite. And I'm probably going to throw in some vermiculite too. Uh, vermiculite and, and um, perlite <laughs> are, um, they do pretty much the same thing. Keep your, uh, your soil where it holds a little bit more moisture and keeps it aerated keeps it lighter so you know you can't go wrong with that anyway let's get these containers up here actually I'm gonna get my mixing pot up here I'm gonna show you what I do to kind of amend bagged potting soil and then I'm gonna mix my own okay I filled my container up about three quarters of the way with potting mix. I'm going to add in my peat moss. Y'all, I do not have a, let's just dump that whole thing in there because it's a little bit too heavy for me. I don't have a formula. I put it in there until it feels right to me. And then, yeah, that's enough. think see how light that is that is just so light and fluffy I think I'm going to go ahead and throw in some vermiculite just because I want to strawberries are prone to a fungal disease so you don't want them to sit in water you want good well draining soil 
that will stay a little bit moist. See what I mean? It's kind of like when I'm cooking. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Now, I am going to leave it at about that level. That's about an inch and a half down from the top. So, it'll give me plenty of room for the plants to come up and drape over. And it will also give me room to put mulch in. And when I water, it won't come up over the side. Now it's time for my homemade potting soil. Let me show you this extra large um, block of peat moss. This was 12 or $14, I don't remember. Way cheaper than buying it by the bag. So, and it is compressed in here, so we are going to have to do a little bit of finagling with it. And y'all, even when I fill up my raised beds, you know I have to top them off every year. I would buy one of these and bagged potting soil, because that's what I put in my raised beds. Um, depending on how this feels and works, I might just do this with the compost um, and not worry about buying bags of potting soil, but uh, I would break some of this up, throw it in there, and it took, I have three four by four and three two by eight foot raised beds, and it did them all with just this one block. So, trying not to make a mess here, and I'm really trying not to drop it because I got it balanced on the compost bucket down here. I did not make my compost. I bought it. I will show that to you in a bit. There we go. Now, I, whenever we started our pepper seeds, I told y'all about peat moss being kind of water repellent. So, I'm using this because we're going to have to moisten it up so it will uh, hold on to the water. Y'all doing this stuff up here is pain in the butt. <laughs> I'm just saying. Once I get this knocked down, I'll be able to just dump it and it will be fine. So, the ratios that the guy told me on YouTube is two parts peat moss, two parts compost, and one part perlite. So, I'm going to do perlite and vermiculite, and I'm going to use the bagged compost that I got for way cheaper than a bag of soil. So, the whole purpose of this is not to make more work for myself. Um, I know time is money, but if it works out, and I'm doing this anyway, I'm adding peat moss and perlite to the regular potting mix. So, I'm doing the same daggum thing. Might as well save some money while I'm doing it. I really want to pick this up and dump some in there, but I'm not going to have enough room to mix. Let's just leave it like that. I'm going to have to mix more to add into these big containers, but I don't have to do it right this minute. Okay, so before I add the compost in here, I'm going to add some water. And get it to where it's not going to repel the moisture. I'm going to call that good enough. Now, I'm going to put in the same amount of compost. And I got smart and I put my compost in a bucket. And then, 
perlite. Just for because I want to, some vermiculite. And let's mix this all in and see what it looks like. The compost that I put in, I'll put a picture up. Is a mix of cow manure and compost, which I don't know why they felt the need to put cow manure and compost, but that's what they did because hopefully the cow manure is composted <laughs> so there is my homemade potting mix okay full disclosure um, <laughs> I chickened out I am not willing to sacrifice half of my strawberry harvest on an experiment. So I only did that one that you saw me uh, mix together. I'm going to go ahead and go with what I know works because, yeah, I don't want to mess them up. I do want to see if that soil is going to work for future years. But for right now, I'm going to uh, plant in what I know works. So these are my June bearing strawberries. Y'all, that road is loud. And they are much easier to separate now that they have soaked a little bit in the water. So there's two plants right there and there's already new green growth. So I'm going to just lay them out where I want to plant them. I thought I could figure out how many go in each one, but as I'm laying these out, I'm seeing that I'm going to be able to get a bit more in here than what I thought. So the strawberries, the, the, the tag says between 12 and 24 inches. I thought I was going to have to fudge that a little bit in these containers. Um, but I don't think I'm going to. Y'all, I'm trying to be gentle with these. Y'all have to be really, really gentle, but don't rip them. That's already four. I think there's might be more than ten in here. Five. Oh, no. That's a big one. I think all of these roots go to that one big, huge clump. Oh, I need to put a stop on my door so it doesn't keep swinging open and hitting like that. There's a smaller one. I'll give you a better up close view of these. Yeah, this is one strawberry plant, y'all, and I'm not complaining. That's a big old sucker. And look at all of those roots. And there is some pretty green growth right there. So how many do I have in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I thought I was only going to get five around the edge. And then I'm going to put one in the middle. Yeah, there's a, a little bit more. I think there's like 11 in here. Let me make sure that's just one. So one in the middle, that's eight. No, there's not going to be 11. There's only going to be nine. Well, that kind of makes me mad. Let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, there's only nine. I think I'm going to go ahead and put, nope, there it is, right there. Oh, there's the 11th one. <laughs> These are small, but we're still going to plant them. 
And that is a nice large one. Okay, the trick with strawberries, y'all, wipe my hands, is you do not want to plant them any deeper than the crown of the plant. So, let's get, which way? There we go. See where the roots come out right here? That's as deep as you want to plant it. Right there. And you see how this is sticking out that way? I want that facing towards the outside of the pot because strawberries are going to grow one way and I want the strawberries themselves to grow out and hang over the side of the pot so when I plant this I'm only going to plant it to about right there and then I'm going to aim the new growth towards the side of the pot let me get all of these planted and I will, you know what? Let me not, because I forgot to put my fertilizer in. Got these all nice and laid out and then didn't put my fertilizer. This is organic, so I don't mind putting my hand on it. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some all around the outside of the pot. It's slow release, it's mild, it's not going to burn your plant, so I'm not measuring. And then I'm going to put some right in the middle, and then I'm just going to scratch it in a little bit. Now, I'm going to plant them. This is not the same one, but do you see how that new growth is shooting out the side? That's how I'm going to aim it to where it goes over the side of the pot as it grows bigger. And only as deep as the bottom of this. I'm going to put this one right in the middle, but you see they all have a direction. The reason you want to make sure that that doesn't get under the soil line is because it will rot. I need to go ahead and lay these back out so I can make sure, oh, almost planted another one in there, so I can make sure that I'm getting them in the correct spacing. If some, uh, y'all, I just broke off that new growth. It's okay, there will be more. Um, if some of the roots show up above the soil line, it's not, that's not going to be a problem um, because we're going to mulch this with some cedar shavings. There's the other huge one. I'm going to come through and cut these pieces off, lay them back out. Like I said, I was going to. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I had seven around the outside. And then one right in the middle. There we go. Okay. This one is a little bit more difficult to see, but you can definitely see where the roots are coming out. And I don't know where the growth is going to be, so that's just a guessing game. If it grows towards the inside of the pot, it just does. These strawberries will put off runners. And as... As they grow, we'll do some little updates, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with those runners. You don't want to let the first runners, um, you don't want to let them go. You don't want to let them run while you're getting fruit because that takes uh, energy away from the plant to put off babies. That's how they propagate themselves. And uh, you want all of that energy going into fruit production. Now, when it gets hotter and uh, they go, uh, they stop producing fruit for a little bit, at the end of the season, you can let them put off runners. And that is how you're going to multiply your strawberries. I had some beautiful runners at the end of, not last, was it last season? Y'all, I don't remember. The years are running together. And um, I cut off the first batch, but 
but the second batch they were coming down and they were hanging off the side of my pot and my wonderful husband was doing yard work and was um, weed eating in my raised bed area and cut all of them off. I cried. He apologized because he didn't know. He's not, he's not a gardener. He does not know. Um, but, I mean, you could kind of see that they were strawberries. Anyway, I'm not going to hold it against him. He knows better now. And I also do all the weeding in my garden. <laughs> we'll just make sure that, that, uh, that I do all the weeding in there and we won't have an issue. Alright, I'm going to firm this down. And the only thing left to do on this is to mulch over the top. And I'm going to use cedar shavings. Uh, pine shavings are way, way cheaper. But they make the soil too acidic. Strawberries like a little bit more of an acidic soil, but not that much. So I'm going to go with cedar shavings. Because that is going to hold in the moisture and keep the temperature in the heat of the summer keep the soil temperature a little bit lower to where um, I might get production a little bit longer all right here are my cedar shavings they're a little bit big but that's okay it'll just take them a little bit longer to um, break down so I'm just going to put these all over the top of this pot. I'm going to take it outside and water these in. And they are done. I'm going to finish planting up all the rest of my containers. And put them out where they're going to live for now. Because, as I told you in the beginning... They say full sun. But they don't say Texas full sun. I've learned that if you give them a little bit of shade in the heat of the summer, they will love you so much. So, hence the reason, one, that I'm putting them in pots because they are movable and these are perennial they will come back every year as long as you take care of them um, they're hardy down to negative 20 or negative 30 but as long as you take care of them they'll keep coming back my raised beds are hugel culture beds so every year i have to top them off Google culture if you don't know what that means I think I've got some uh, some videos from when I put my beds together and I will put up a video to that but they um, you basically fill your beds with leaves and tree limbs and things like that and hay and and things like that and it composts in place which means every year it composts down it gets smaller so you have to top them off well strawberries don't like having their crowns in the dirt so you really can't do that in a bed like that so these I have more control over the moisture I have more control of the location because my raised beds are fixed they are not movable um, I've never had any luck in my raised beds with strawberries um, I have had luck in pots so I can move these to the shade when it gets to be 110 degrees and uh, give them a little reprieve from the summer heat. So I'm going to water these in and show you the finished product. Got them watered in. One thing I forgot to mention about cedar shavings is I know um, we put things in cedar chests. We build our closets out of cedar. 
to keep the bugs away. I am hoping that that does the same thing for my strawberries. Um, I'm going to do a garden tour here pretty soon. There's not a whole lot to see except for a bunch of weeds and um, beds that need to be refilled. But I'll show you where I place these to start with. So, um, you know, they're probably not going to live in the same places for very long, depending on how they grow. Anyway, thank y'all so much for joining me, and I will see y'all soon. Bye.